So let's take a look at my own personal army list that I've been using over the last few months. I've used it to podium at a few local tournaments, and I think it's a good example to show how you can bring everything together in an Imperial Knight allied army. Hello and welcome back to Allspets Tactics, the strategy-focused 40k channel, where over the last couple of weeks we've been looking at everything Imperial Knight. We've been through most of the units, and over all the Warlord traits, stratagems, and relics, so let's see how that all comes together in one army list. As I said, I've been playing at a few local events, and it's always done well. I think it's five events that I've attended so far, all of them three game tournaments, and in every single one it's won me at least the first two games in those events. I'm really quite happy with the list, which is why I've stuck with it for so long. I feel it gives you the option to have a good shot at winning most games, and can react very well to different opponents' lists. Without further ado, let's get into it. So, the list itself is a Tyrannus Knight Lance Detachment and two Vostroyan Guard Battalions. Overall, that'll give us a massive 19 command points, which is amazing for buying in extra relics, Warlord traits, and using all of those very nice knight stratagems that can really help swing a game against an opponent. The knights are Tyrannus Household, partly for the 6-up Feel No Pain, to add a decent amount of extra survivability. But also, if you do happen to lose a knight first turn, then you might well just be able to get it straight back up again with the Tyrannus specific stratagem. This means that this list is quite resilient to going second, which you need to be if you're expecting to get consistent results. To start with, we have two knight crusaders, armed with my favourite loadout of Avenger Gatling Cannon, Inferno Cannon and Ironstorm Missile Pod. These will generally sit in the middle of the army, hovering at about 36 inch range, dealing out damage to enemy tanks and infantry alike. If I'm going second, I will almost always try and outrange most of the opponent's guns, and allow myself to advance up with that big 12 inch movement to get within range of my guns on my first turn. The Ironstorm missile pods are pretty useful, as they'll allow the knights to chip away at enemy infantry units that are camping on objectives out of line of sight, or if there are none of those, then they're not bad firepower against virtually any target in the game. My Warlord is one of these Crusaders, who has Ion Bulwark and Endless Fury. These are two choices that are useful in almost every matchup. Ion Bulwark is great if your opponent has any shooting that's better than AP-1, and Endless Fury is just a flatly improved Avenger Gatling Cannon that is pretty much an auto-attack in my books every game. No matter what I'm facing, it will be worth having, because Avenger Gatling Cannons are effective against basically any unit you turn them on. Having Ion Bulwark on the Warlord Knight makes the opponent not want to shoot it as much, which is another added bonus. I'll also try and deploy the other Crusader more in harm's way than the Warlord, so the opponent is incentivized to take out that Crusader first. Depending on matchup, I might buy in the Fury of Mars, the boosted Infernal Cannon, for the second Crusader if I'm facing a lot of tanks with no invul saves, particularly say if I'm fighting guard and I need the extra range as well. Another solid option is the 2-up armor save, the Armor of Sainted Isle. Our third knight is a Knight Gallant, who a lot of my opponents seem to dismiss, and yet almost always seems to be targeted first, which is amazing, as it means they're not shooting my more valuable knights or more fragile tank commanders. With Landstrider, he'll have an average 26-inch threat range if you use full tilt, and time and again people will put models around about 24 inches away from the Gallant, thinking they're safe, and not realising that they're well within the average threat range. I'll tailor his relic depending on matchup. If I'm playing knights, I'll typically take the paragon gauntlet, because that means if I can get the gallant into charge on an enemy knight, then it's almost a certain kill. If I'm playing an enemy army with a bunch of fighty close combat characters, I'll typically take sanctuary, which will usually allow the fighty close combat character to charge the gallant, and the gallant to survive to strike back and hopefully strike down his assailant. Even if the Gallant achieves absolutely nothing though, he has another purpose. Ideally, if I advance and charge turn 1, even if I'm forced to charge some screening unit, say like a unit of guardsmen, I'll typically be front and centre in front of the opponent's army. What will then typically happen will be the opponent will move up and surround the Gallant, and focus a lot of their firepower on downing him that turn. They might be expecting me to get back up with the Tyrannus stratagem, but instead the usual intent is that he's going to be using Noble Sacrifice, and I'll save a command reroll specifically for that purpose, to give me a three-quarter chance of exploding if and when the Gallant does go down. 
This Gallant frequently does as much damage in his explosion as he does in his entire useful life. I've had times when the opponent has charged him with four smash captains and positioned a bunch of elite units around him, only for the explosion to take out virtually half their army and quite possibly win me the game. I've also had people underestimate the extra charge range that Landstrider can give. They'll screen a unit with some infantry. The Gallant will move up to within one inches of those infantry. The Crusaders will gun down the screen, and then the Gallant will quite happily charge into an undefended character or tank that thought they were safe behind the infantry screen. Talking of noble sacrifice, say if one of the Crusaders gets engaged and destroyed, I'll often use the Tyrannus Get Back Up stratagem, use Machine Spirit Resurgence to fight on full profile, charge into an enemy unit that's in the midst of the enemy army, perhaps kill that unit with stomps, and then aim to explode all over the enemy with the return close combat attacks. It is quite risky, and it does involve hoping that you'll get that 4-up roll for the explosion and the stratagem to get them back up, but I usually find that these are worth going for, provided you save a command reroll for them. Both of those stratagems can potentially turn a game. Moving on to the guard now. First up, we have a Vostroyan battalion that's using the Emperor's Fist Vigilus Detachment. This is the Lehman Russ focused one, and I'm mainly using it just so I can take the Hammer of Sundrance, the flat damage 3 battle cannon, on the first tank commander. Both tank commanders have a heavy bolter, plasma cannon sponsons and heavy stubber. The first one packs the Hammer of Sundrance, and the second one packs a Punisher Gatling cannon. The Vostroyan trait helps out for a number of different reasons. Firstly, it makes the Punisher Gatling cannon a lot more effective with a 30 inch range. It means that you don't have to put yourself anywhere near as close to the enemy, which helps avoid it getting tagged in close combat or shot by enemy guns. The extra 6 inch range comes up all the time as well on the plasma cannons and heavy bolters. I literally lose count of the times when I'm outside 36 inch range but within 42 inch, and it allows me to choose additional more optimised targets. Finally, it also allows me to use the First Brawn Pride Stratagem to give one of the tank commanders plus one to hit. I'll typically use that on the Hammer of Sundrance commander, as a flat damage 3 battle cannon hitting on a 2 up re-rolling once is absolutely brutal, and that thing can go absolutely nuts on a good roll. Once with some insane rolling, uh, the Hammer of Sundrance took out an entire squad of tower broadsides, that's three full broadside battle suits, in a single shot. Obviously that's not average, but it gives you an idea of what the damage output can be when the stars align. The Punisher Gatling Cannon Tank is primarily there to counter Plague Bearers, which is often an army I've struggled against while playing Imperial Knights. I'll use the Firstborn Pride stratagem to give them the tank plus one to hit, and then the Vengeance Vicalia stratagem, which just makes it flat broken against Chaos Armies. 40 strength 5 shots, hitting the Plague Bearers on a natural 3, re-rolling all hits and re-rolling all wounds, typically equates to about 35 wounds on the Plague Bearer squad, and around about 18 dead Plague Bearers on average. There's very little in the entire game that's as points effective against Plague Bearers or any other Chaos Horde for that matter. The plasma cannons on the tanks are also incredibly powerful and shouldn't be underestimated. Between the two sets of plasma cannons, I usually feel like I've got an additional primary weapon to sling down at the enemy. The tank commanders, if I'm going second, will try and deploy out of line of sight, as they're a lot more fragile than the knights and pack almost as much firepower as the crusaders. Ideally, I want the opponent to be shooting at the crusaders rather than the tanks, and usually if I lose my Hammer of Sundrance commander first turn, then I'm in for a bad game. To complete the battalions, we have two company commanders and six infantry squads. These guys can be very flexible. They're primarily there to take and hold objectives but they can also be used to screen out deep strikers, block movement, and stop people from charging the knights. If I'm playing against enemy knights, then the infantry squads will typically get in the way of any charging close combat knights, forcing them to crash against the screen somewhere around about 12 inches from my knights. The knight will kill the infantry squad, and then the gallant will charge straight forward and hopefully one-shot the enemy knight. Interestingly enough, I think I've played other enemy knight armies about 10 times or so at tournaments with my imperial knights, and either through luck or judgement I've never lost a game to an enemy knight army. I think the gallant and the screening infantry are the main contributors to this. The infantry can also be a decent source of anti-infantry firepower. First rank, second rank and those extended range las guns from Vostroins can be a potent combination. 
they're never going to change the world in terms of damage inflicted, but those extra few shots can potentially chip off the last few wounds of a big nasty, or kill the enemy infantry that are trying to contest some objectives. On the other hand, if we're playing a very kill point focused mission, I've often had the infantry squads literally just hide out of line of sight in ruins at the back of the board for the entire game. I did this last time I played Eldar Flyer Spam, and wound up winning the game because my five heavy hitters dealt with a lot of the enemy army. I think they did all die by the end of the game, but only after they'd scored absolutely loads of objective points, and not a single one of my troops units had been killed because they were out of line of sight, not drawing attention to themselves for the entire game long. One thing that really shouldn't be underestimated on Imperial Guardsmen is the move 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 order. This can let you grab objectives a silly amount of distance away. You can either send an infantry squad to do it, or maybe when a lot of your infantry have been killed later in the game, the company commanders themselves are some of the best units for holding objectives, because of course the enemy can't target them unless they're closest to them. It's quite satisfying when you send a lone company commander out there to yell at himself to move, 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 to get on an objective something like 18 inches away, and then one of your heavy hitters just blows away all the enemy units that were also on the objective, leaving your lone commando to secure it. And then we come to the final part of the list, and honestly one of my favourites is my Astropath with Psychic Maelstrom. This guy is 26 points worth of rage, and he is the best points per unit investment in the entire list. He gives the list a very important Psychic Denial roll, which gives you that one chance to stop a key power, and because I have so many command points, I'll often burn a reroll on the Denial dice, particularly if I'm close to dis dispelling it, and it's something potentially game-breaking such as... Doom or Jinx from Eldar. Stopping one of those powers going off on one of your knights is absolutely key and could potentially change the outcome of the whole game. He could be worth it just literally for his denial powers alone. But Psychic Maelstrom is also a great spell. It's a Warp Charge 7 targeted smite that goes off and you do a mortal wound on a 2 up, then a 3 up, then a 4 up. This means that if you do get it off, you can quite reliably do around 2 mortal wounds. But just every so often, the stars absolutely align and he'll just shred through 3-5 to five wounds off an enemy big hitter. This guy has burnt Custody Shield Captains from the sky, and has done more wounds to an Iron Hands Leviathan Dreadnought than the rest of the army did in the subsequent shooting phase. In some games where I've lost all of the knights, and just the guards and the characters remain, he's helped to chip off the last few wounds off a Knight Castellan. Also, because he can target characters, I've had him chip the last wound off an enemy Warlord, that I wouldn't otherwise have been able to target, and once he did three wounds to a Skull Reaver Demon Prince, which allowed it to be killed in the uh, following charge phase by my Knight Gallant's explosion when he killed it. For just 26 points, this guy usually makes his points back by a fair deal. As I've already alluded to, this list can play very differently versus different opponents. Against typical Knight lists that are coming forward to hit me with their chainswords, I'll often use the infantry as screening, and let the opponents come to me, allowing the Crusaders' guns to do the work before I counter-attack with a gallant charge, and potentially get the Crusaders stuck in in close combat too. Against deep striking and horde lists, such as Chaos Demons, the guards will also screen and deny deep strike zones to incoming plague bearers or bloodletters, and then again the knights will counter-attack. Against lists without much close combat threat, I'll throw all the knights forward as fast as possible to get stepping on the opponents, while also blazing away with all of those guns. And against elite armies, I'll certainly be looking to throw the gallant into the biggest concentration of enemy units to kill some stuff, then hopefully go nuclear and drag down half the army with him. I think that the list is generally fairly hard to counter, as it's got very good shooting output, very good durability with a whole ton of toughness 8 vehicles, Decent melee between the Gallant and the Knights, a ton of command points, and an absolute horde of bodies for scoring objectives. That said, I have lost a few games with it. I've been beaten by an Orc list with a huge horde of boys and 17 Smasher Guns, a Chaos list with a whole bunch of Butcher Cannons, and some advancing Lord Discordants and Helldrakes, and twice by the new Iron Hands, one with the full Ironstone and Fyros Castle that no longer exists, and once after the nerf by a bunch of Leviathan Dreadnoughts. Though barring the game with the Ironstone and Fyros, all of them were fairly close affairs. If you have any criticism or ideas, I'd dearly love to hear them. I do think that this list demonstrates quite well what Imperial Knights and Guards can do together on the tabletop. The two balance out a lot of each other's weaknesses. 
As always, thank you for listening to Allspets Tactics. If you've enjoyed this, then consider subscribing for more videos that are of similar nature. And I'll hope to see you guys in the next video.